Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about data fusion and uh, the following filters, which are pretty common in uh, uh, robotics application. Uh, in my other video, I uh, talked about base filter, the equation, uh, the proof, how do we get them. So I strongly recommend you to have a look on the base filter. I have implemented these uh, filters with uh, Python. So uh, have a look on my website to get the uh, code so we can uh, get a better insight for it. So in the first video, I'm going to only talk about the common filter and then uh, in the second and third and fourth about the uh, extended, unscented and uh, particle filter. So uh, let's get started with the common filter. And as I said, uh, please have a look in the uh, base filter video where I uh, describe everything there. Okay, so uh, base filter, uh, in brief, base filter is a filter that tries to uh, estimate uh, our current state based on some measurements and uh, previous state. So we have uh, uh, in data fusion two hypotheses and uh, based on the reliance that we have on them, uh, we're going to come up with a conclusion about the actual state. So we have a uh, measurement and we have a uh, prediction uh, or estimation. It's, it's pretty intuitive. If you uh, consider a robot that's located somewhere, so uh, there are different ways that you might get there. So uh, we show that with this term, integral over all the location that we might have been there, multiply by the probability of moving from that particular state with a motion command to this state because we we might be in given a state and we execute a motion command, but we may not end up here. Uh, you can also have a look at my other video about uh, Markov localization, where I give a good example about the robot localization with these red and green doors. Uh, I'll put also the link in the description. So the prediction part will tell us if uh, we are in, the, in a particular state and uh, we move with the move uh, with the given motion command, what are the chances that we actually end up in the current state that we have? And we do it for all state that we might be there. So this is a prediction estimation is pretty intuitive. Then after you get into a given state, you do some measurements. The measurements depended on the state. So uh, uh, we uh, have to fuse these two uh, hypotheses to get a, a better insight where are uh, what is the actual state of our uh, uh, XT or where is the robot for instance and there's an eta parameter here this is only for uh, uh, this is a normalizer because this should be a valid probability you can see this is believed this is not a probability uh, this is going to be sum over all the values so just uh, make it a proper uh, probability value so this is called prediction or estimation this is called correction or update okay uh, so as you can see, uh, uh, we have uh, two hypotheses and we multiply them here. Uh, this is coming from the sensor or the measurement. And usually, uh, in most of the cases, this is Gaussian, or we can assume this is Gaussian. Like for instance, uh, if your robot is uh, as a range scanner and it says I'm two meters away from something it's gonna be in this form uh, two meters uh, with some uncertainty that we usually show it with uh, variance or covariance and uh, also the uh, prediction that we made like we use a second uh, law of motion and uh, we move one meter but we might actually due to the friction or drifting our robot, we might move uh, one meter and a half, or just only half a meter. So again, this <clears throat> this could be a model with uh, some Gaussian distribution. So this again gonna be something like this, like one meter and some uncertainty. 
So we are actually multiplying two Gaussians and we're interested to see the result. The result of multiplication product of two Gaussian is again another Gaussian. So what are the mean and covariance of the new uh, Gaussian based on these two? Okay, product of two Gaussians. Um, we know that if we multiply Gaussian by a number, the new mean is going to be k times more and the uh, new variance is going to be k power 2. And if it's an n-dimensional data, well, you have to multiply by a vector and uh, the new covariance is going to be a old covariance multiplied by uh, transpose. Okay, so this is when you uh, multiply a uh, Gaussian by a number or by a, by a, by a vector. What happens if you multiply these two Gaussian? Okay. Hypothesis number one. Number two, what are the mean and covariance? The new mean and the new covariance for this product going to be something like this. If you look carefully, we can take out these parameters from both and rewrite it in this form. This is called a gain, and that tells us, uh, based on the uh, uncertainty that we have, or based on the trust that we have on hypothesis numbers 0 and 1, what would be the new mean and covariance. Let's say we have a huge trust on your first hypothesis, like you're very certain of your uh, model or prediction. So that means this is going to be pretty small. When it's pretty small, k is going to be 0. If k is 0, you can see the new mean is like the, is the mean of first hypothesis. Okay? And the covariance is going to be also uh, pretty small. Now let's say and uh, the uh, other way around. Let's say your uh, measurement is much better than your model. It means this is pretty small. When this is pretty small, the k is almost 1. When k is 1, these two are going to cancel out. So the new mean is going to be almost the mean of your measurement. And the co covariance or the variance is going to be almost 0. And it perfectly makes sense when your uh, sensor data is much better than your estimation. So the new state is going to be almost the one that you uh, uh, get via your uh, measurement. So uh, that was it. You basically understood the common filter. Uh, let's uh, have a look on the equation. Before that, uh, if you have a n d uh, data instead of uh, a number for a mean and instead of uh, variance, you have covariance and you have a vector. So this is exactly the same like this, but only for n d data. Okay. Let's uh, have a look to see how do we uh, implement this. Okay, uh, so as I said, uh, we have a prediction step from the base filter and uh, from Newton's law of motion, we know that the uh, position and velocity uh, in the next state based on the previous state. So our state is position and velocity. And we know that the new velocity is going to be old velocity plus acceleration multiplied by delta t. And also, same for uh, uh, position. Okay, So if we put it in a matrix form, we get something like this. The new state is going to be this matrix multiplied by the previous uh, state plus uh, uh, control matrix. Uh, this is uh, where we exert a new force to our system to get the acceleration. And uh, we can write it uh, in a matrix form like this. So the new state is going to be uh, F, which is called a transition matrix, I don't know, model matrix, prediction matrix, so many names, um, plus uh, some control matrix and some control vectors. So uh, your mean for position and the mean for the velocity going to be multiplied by this matrix 
and then a plus by this uh, value that we got in this matrix. So if you remember what happened if you multiply it by a, a matrix, the, the new mean and the new covariance going to be uh, multiplied by a matrix that we have. So this is your new mean that is multiplied by the and your new uh, and the covariance going to be uh, multiply by this matrix and it's transposed plus some uh, noise that we have uh, because we have some uncertainty about the uh, uh, movement so we uh, have to somehow leave some spot for it so this is called process noise sometimes you show it with the r sometimes with the q so your new covariance gonna be uh, f multiplied by old covariance multiplied by f transpose plus q this is exactly uh, what we had here that uh, your new covariance multiplied by a then the new covariance gonna be a covariance a transpose that we have here plus some uh, noise okay so uh, we move to the new state we do some measurement to get the second hypothesis. That was the first hypothesis. We have the mean and the covariance. This is our mean, and this is our covariance from the first hypothesis. Now let's see uh, the second hypothesis or the measurement, what it's telling us, okay. In the correction or update state, we do some measurements. We read some uh, position and velocity, and uh, we usually multiply by H. H is a matrix. Uh, the reason is uh, sometimes we have to do some scaling, unit conversion, and stuff like this, like uh, meter per second, kilometers per second, or something like this. So we take into account some h. Usually we put some identity here because uh, uh, you read the value exactly the same here. But uh, it, it, you have to keep in mind that uh, there's an h matrix here. So we have a data, we multiply by matrix. Uh, what is the new covariance? Exactly the same. Uh, old hypothesis, old covariance multiplied by h, multiplied by h transpose plus some uh, noise. This is a, a measurement noise because again we have some uncertainty about the uh, measurements that we are doing. So now we have a second hypothesis: the mean and the covariance, and also the mean and covariance from the uh, first hypothesis. And if you uh, remember, we uh, had to compute the K. We, we multiply them together, first hypothesis, second hypothesis, and uh, we try to get the new mean and covariance mm. from these two. So we have to compute the K. But if you write the old equation, you will see that we have a HK in both sides of uh, K, so uh, we can knock out the HK uh, to get rid of that. And actually we compute K prime. This is uh, what's usually using the implementation. K prime. Uh, so we compute the K prime like this. Uh, then uh, what are the new means and covariance? This is a new mean and covariance exactly based on what we uh, computed here. So that's the new state after the uh, measurement. So now we use again this mean and uh, uh, covariance for uh, another step of prediction. We feed this to the prediction step and we get the continue. So uh, please have a look on the uh, implementation uh, with uh, Python. And if you have any question, just uh, ask me. Yeah. Uh, thank you and have a good day.